So here we are. We're going to talk uh, subsetting. Okay, so we left off on Wednesday. We started our subsetting discussion on, you know, kind of subsetting vectors and all of that. And now we'll, uh, we'll expand subsetting to subsetting matrices and arrays. And we're going to say, as far as subsetting these higher dimensional structures, that being a two-dimensional structure, a three-dimensional structure, things like that, uh, you can subset them with multiple vectors, which is probably the way you guys are most familiar with. But you can also subset with a single vector or even subset with a matrix, okay? Uh, and subsetting the multiple vectors method is probably the most common. So you'll subset, you know, a matrix using two, two different vectors there, okay? And so here, I'm creating a matrix A. Matrix A is the values 1 through 9 with three rows. So it's going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay? So that's, that's the matrix. And then uh, we can give it the column names A, B, and C. So, um, so we've got columns A, B, and C. And here I'm saying subset matrix A using the single square brackets 1 colon 2. So this corresponds to the rows. And then the blank over here corresponds to the columns. So the vector I provide, 1 through 2, says I want the rows 1, 2. The blank for the column vector means I want all of the columns. And that's exactly what we get. We get the first two rows and all of the columns. So I get 1, 2, 4, 5, 7, 8. Over here, I'm giving it two vectors. One vector is a logical vector, true, false, true. So that's going to be what? The first and the third rows are true. The second row is false. And then it says, as, and then there's a comma here after that vector, so which says the columns that I want to select, excuse me, are columns B and A. And that's exactly what I get. I get the first and third rows, okay? The, the resulting thing is a, is a matrix, two by two matrix, but it corresponds to the first and third rows in matrix A and columns B and A, which are the columns that I specified. And then lastly, we've got, we're giving it the vector zero. So that means I want zero, none of the rows. And as far as the columns I want to select, I want the columns other than the second column. And so here I get basically matrix with no rows but what it preserved is it preserved the names of the column of the first and third columns column names a and c okay but there's there's nothing in here there's no no rows in there zero rows all right and i think i think we're probably accustomed to this right as far as subsetting a matrix okay and so uh yeah it says by default a single single square bracket will simplify the results to the lowest possible dimensionality, okay? And we'll talk about pre um, preservation uh, to avoid this. And so if we said, is A a vector, which A is not, it's a matrix, okay? Is vector is going to say false, all right? <coughs> and if we select A, if we subset A and say, I just want the first row, what it does is it returns 1, 4, 7. And if we ask, is that thing a vector? The answer is true. So what it returns, so if I look at A, A originally is a matrix, and when it, when it returns the thing, it doesn't give me back a matrix of one row and three columns. It gives me back a vector of ele three elements, okay? And that's the default behavior of the subsetting operations. If it can reduce something down to a vector, it's going to reduce it down to a vector. So if you subset a matrix or uh, to just one row or one column, rather than preserving it as a matrix of one row with three columns, it's going to just simplify it to a vector of three elements. Okay? Is that, is that okay? So, so this, these become vectors. All right, so that was subsetting using kind of multiple vectors and that's where you know using a blank vector where you get everything back is is very useful because sometimes you want all the columns or you want all the rows and so you can leave a blank to say um, I want to 
on everything. Okay, over here, um, we can treat the matrix as just a vector itself, as an atomic vector, okay? Because internally, our, a matrix is just an atomic vector with a dimension attribute, right? So this is, this vector, this five by five um, matrix is actually a vector of 25 elements, okay? And I can refer and I can say I want just the fourth and the 15th element. So there's no comma after this um, subset operator, okay? So it just says subset the matrix vals, and there's no comma. I just want the fourth and the 15th element. So if we treat this like a 25 element vector going down the columns, the fourth element is this, and then we keep going. This is the fifth, 10th, and then this one right here is the 15th element. So the fourth element is four comma one, and the 15th element is five comma three. Okay. This, um, this matrix vals was uh, produced using the outer function. I don't know if you guys are familiar with outer. Outer is like outer multiplication or outer. What it does is it, um, it's kind of like an apply function, but it takes two vectors as inputs and then it applies um, a function to those two, um, to every kind of cross, um, like a cross product of those two, um, of the elements in those two vectors. So here, you know, it says take the vector one through five and the other vector one through five, and then the function we're applying is paste, which just turns them into character vectors and pastes them together. So it gives us one comma one and three comma three and so on and so forth. Um, the, you can just do uh, like one through 10, outer multiply. The shorthand for outer multiply is percent O percent one through 10. And what this will do is it takes the vector one through 10 and the other vector one through 10 and it pro um, applies a multiplication, outer multiplication. So it's gonna return back a 10 by 10 matrix. Okay, and so now we just have our times table for um, all the values one through 10. And so this could be useful if you have like a, you need to figure out all these kind of cross products of, of something um, like that. Okay, so this would have been handy in like when you were learning your times tables and stuff in third grade or something. Um, very quickly, does that right there. Yeah, no need to do a loop and say like, do this thing. Just just do outer multiplication. Right? And if you want to apply a function other than the multiplication, you can use uh, the function outer. Okay, anyway, going back um, to subsetting our matrix, we can also subset a matrix or an array with another matrix, okay? And in this case, what we are doing is we provide it a matrix where the columns correspond to the dimensions, okay? So uh, what we have here is over here I've got a five by five matrix Okay, so there's two dimensions, and we could define every value in this matrix using kind of two coordinates, right? Like a, a row coordinate and a column coordinate, okay? And so what I can do is I can say, I'm going to give it a matrix. This matrix has two rows, and here I'm doing by row equals true because um, I kind of want to preserve the, the structure of saying, you know, the first, um, each row is going to correspond to the item I'm going to select. So this first item that I'm going to select is um, going to be in uh, row one, column one. This is going to be, the second item is row three, column one, and the third item is row two, column four. And so I'm selecting, I'm defining the coordinates of the three items that I want to select out of this five by five matrix. Okay, so here the, this matrix select is three by two, so I'm going to select three rows, or three items, that have been uh, defined by those two coordinates. And so indeed, I get 1, 1, 3, 1, and 2, 4. Okay. If I have over here, I've generalized this. If we have a make, uh, an array, a three-dimensional array, okay, of the I, uh, numbers 1 through 12, <laughs> with um, you know two rows, three columns, and two layers, this is what I have. And so here, the uh, matrix that I'm 
using to select my array is going to be a matrix that's got three rows and so now and I have and yeah three columns and two rows so I'm going to select two items so the first one is going to be first row second column first layer first row second column first layer that's this um, value three and then the second thing I'm selecting is second row third column second layer second row third column second layer will be uh, 232 okay 12 okay and that's that's exactly what we select so I can select so if I have a higher dimensional structure like an array or a matrix I can give it another matrix and I can subset the array using a matrix itself okay so again those are kind of the three ways we can subset um, subset of matrix is one is we can give it kind of a vector for the x or a vector for the rows a vector for the columns that we want to select that's probably our most common way second is we can treat the matrix itself as just a long vector and say which elements we want and then lastly we can also provide it a matrix of kind of coordinates that are used to select it With, um, with data frames, okay, so internally we know that data frames are stored as lists inside R, okay? So because they are lists, we can subset a data frame as a list, but because they also have the two-dimensional structure, we can also kind of use the operators that we use to subset a matrix, all right? And so here I'm defining a data frame with three columns, X, Y, and Z, and, uh, and this is what it looks like. <laughs> And here I can say I want the rows and I'm going to provide it um, a logical vector and then comma nothing. The comma nothing means I want all the columns, right? So here the logical vector is when does column X equal to, using double equal, double equal for the, to make it a logical vector. So here it's going to go false, true, false. So it's only going to select the second row, and indeed that's what we get. Okay, so I've subset the data frame where uh, x is equal to 2. We, we've probably seen stuff like this before, right? In uh, stats 20, yeah, okay. Likewise, we can say I want to subset the data frame. I want the first row and the third row, comma, blank, meaning I want all the columns. Okay, first row and third row, I want all the columns, and that's what we have. We got first and third row, all the columns. Okay, here I can select the columns like I would subset a list. Okay, and so here I'm saying I want to subset the data frame selecting um, the elements that are named X and Z. And when I do that, it returns back X and Z because inside... Inside R, the data frame is treated like, like a list, and so I can have dollar sign $x and data frame dollar sign $z, and, um, and I can subset using the names $x and $z. Okay, and so that will return back those things. Which is, and notice there's no comma bef uh, before this, so I'm not saying... Um, I'm treating this like a list, which is different from over here where I say um, I want all the rows and I want the columns named X and Z, okay? So the, the end result is the same. Here I don't have a comma, so it just says give me back the items in the list named X and Z. And over here it says I want all the rows but where the columns are named X and Z. The key difference here is that over here the, the results look the same, but if I only named one thing, okay, so if I said data frame x, okay, it gives me back the, um, the item in the data frame named x, which is this column 1, 2, 3, whereas if I do data frame space comma x, 
Okay, this says all the rows and the co column named x. What is this going to give me? It simplifies it to a vector, 1, 2, and 3. Okay, so the if effectively what, what you get back is the same, although this preserves the structure of the data frame because I'm effectively subsetting it like a list. When you subset a list um, using single square brackets, it returns a list, right? And, and so because a data frame is basically just a list with some structure, that's what we get. Okay, so, uh, and that's written right here. There's an important difference if you select a single column. If you subset like a list, it's going to return it, the structure returns as a data frame. Whereas if you say, I want all the rows and just the column named X, it simplifies it down to uh, its vector form. Okay, here we got a few uh, things to just see, uh, you know, what's wrong. Is anything going to go wrong with, uh, with this command? I'm saying I want to subset empty cars. Empty cars is an internal data frame in R. It's got a bunch of uh, cars here, but um, I think 32 cars, it's got 11 columns, and it's got things like miles per gallon and cylinders and things like that. Okay, so um, if I say empty cars where I want cylinders equal to 4, is there a problem here? Yeah, we're trying to do assignment here, okay? What we need to do is we need to have a logical test using double equals, okay? So we got to do double equals 4, and then it will work. <laughs> Here I've got uh, empty cars. I want the rows negative one through four. Okay, we can't. Um, you can't have negative numbers in there. Okay, as far as or mixing negative numbers with positive ones. If you if you just have negative one, it will return all the rows other than the first one. But uh, but here um, we've got this. So here I've got uh, one through four. Or I could have done um, empty cars negative. 1 through 4, and this would give me everything but the first four rows. Okay, so that's also allowed. So this gets rid of the first four rows if I did that. Empty cars, empty cylinder, less than or equal to 5. So this is a legitimate uh, logical operator, and we can ask, and it will return back true and false for when cylinders is less than or equal to 5. But what's the problem here? There's no comma, right? So um, if I need to have the comma to say I want the rows where this thing is true. Uh, if I don't put in that comma, and I have empty cars, dollar sign, cylinder, less than or equal to 5, okay, it's going to say undefined columns selected. And basically, if I say empty cars less than or equal to 5, I've got false, false, true, false, false, something like this, okay? When um, there, you could give a true, false vector. You can go um, true, true, false, false, uh, true, false, or something like this, okay? And it will select um, the first column, second column, skip the third and the fourth, <laughs> Uh, select the fifth column, skip the sixth, and then recycle those things, okay? And then so, you know, first, third, um, fifth, and, and something like that, which is which is what we have. Okay, first, third, skips the second, uh, third and fourth, and fifth, skips the sixth, and then it, it selects those, okay? Which is what it's doing there. But the problem with this is I'm giving it a true-false vector of 32 elements, and it says, hey, I only have 11 columns, and that's why it's saying undefined columns selected. It says, you know, you're giving me, you're telling me to select the 32nd column. I only have 11 columns. That's why it's saying undefined columns selected there. Because okay, this is treating it like um, select these items in the list. Okay, over here I've got empty cars, cylinder equal, equal 4 or 6. Is there a problem here? So if I uh, if I do this, empty cars, um, 
where empty cars dollar sign cylinder is equal to four or six. Um, whoops, and I put a put the comma in there. Okay, it looks like it did something, but it actually it just returned everything. So what's going on here is that um, what we need to do is we need to have two logical statements. Okay, we need to say cylinder is equal to four or cylinder is equal to six. This is going to be a bunch of trues and falses. This will be a bunch of trues and falses. And then the or will give us the union of those trues and falses. If I just have, um, basically, I'm saying um, true or six okay true or six will be true and then false or six is also true okay so this is going to be true for everything because what's happening is this or operator is coercing the six to a true or false value and because it's not zero it's going to be true okay <laughs> so basically this thing back here is a bunch of trues and falses or always true which is going to be always true okay and then I think we kind of hinted at this if I say empty cars 1 through 20 without the comma what's it gonna try to do it's gonna try to select the first 20 columns so this thing will give me undefined columns selected because we only have 11 columns and uh, and so we need to put throw in the comma there to say I want the first 20 rows and all the columns does that make sense? All of this subsetting stuff? Okay, are there any questions before I move on? We're good. Okay, then let's talk lists. It says subsetting a list works in the same way as subsetting an atomic vector. Using the single square bracket will always return a list, whereas using double square bracket or the dollar sign um, lets you pull out components in the list. Okay, so here I'm defining a list D with um, three things in it, A, B, and C. A is the numeric vector, one, two, three. B is a logical vector, and C is a character vector. And if I do D single bracket one, it gives me back a list of a list where there's only one thing in it being um, A, and, uh, and the, which is the vector one, two, three. Okay, but using single square bracket always returns it, returns a list. Okay, here I'm defining L1 as a list of one, two, three, the letter, the first four letters, and then the values one through five. So here, oh, I'm sorry, so this is a recursive list. It's a uh, L1 itself as a list, and inside the list, the first thing there is a list, and the second thing is a vector. So it's a list of, if we look at the structure of L1, it's a list of two. The first thing itself is a list, and then the second thing is this integer vector. Okay, so that's what we have here. And so if I do um, L1 single bracket, it gives me back, it's going to be a list of one where the first thing is a list of two. Okay, and so that's why I have kind of all, all of these double square brackets. It's a list of one. And, the, and itself is a list of two. Whereas if I use double square bracket on one, it's not going to be, um, it, it finally goes into this internal layer. And so I don't have these extra double square brackets. It just gives me back the list of two. Okay. And then if we want to try to subset this further, if I take this L1 double square bracket one, okay, and I say give me back the second thing using single square brackets, it gives me back basically a list where the uh, of the vector a, a through D, okay? And if I say subset this thing using single square bracket two, it returns back null. Why is it giving me back null? Because the single square bracket 2 is looking for the second list item, which doesn't exist. There's only one list item. One list item of a character vector. If I want this letter B, what I have to do is I have to say double square bracket 1 
to get kind of the first thing. And then double square bracket two, which is not the list, but the character vector itself. Then I can subset this character vector with a single square bracket two and get the B. Is, is that okay? All of this uh, difference between the... If you can understand the difference between um, all four of these things here, then, then you'll have a good handle on this list stuff, okay? And if you're looking at this and it's all like super confusing and you don't quite get it, okay? I would say, I would suggest this weekend, spend a little bit of time subsetting lists using single square versus double square brackets. Make up your own lists and see if you can say, from this, I want to extract this thing, okay? You had a, just a very brief little taste of this in your homework, and I know people had questions about getting those letters H and I and whatnot, um, but, you know, pl play around uh, with this a tiny bit, okay? So I'm, I'm going to try to explain the difference between the single and this double square brackets here, okay? And so for... Um, for lists, we have the double square brackets, which is similar to the single square bracket, except that it can only return a single object, and it allows you to pull pieces out of a list, okay? If you use the single square bracket to a list, it always returns a list, okay? You are subsetting the list, but you're returning back a list. Whereas if you use the double square bracket, you're returning the object inside that list item. So uh, the analogy is think of a list as a train of cars, okay? And so if x is the train, then x double square bracket 5, okay, is the object inside train car 5. Okay, double square bracket 5 is the object inside 5. Whereas x single bracket 4 through 6 are the train, train cars four, five, and six, okay? So if you do x single square bracket five, that is the train car five, okay? If you want the thing inside that car, you have to use the double square bracket, okay? So that's what's going on. So that's why all of this stuff, if you go back and you look at this, you're getting back um, the train car, which is this, and if you want the thing inside the train car, you use the double square bracket. All right, so here, um, this is kind of what we're doing. So if you want to pull something um, out, you have to use the double score bracket with either a single positive integer or a, a character string. And so here, we, if we want the item inside the car, we use the double score bracket one or a there, okay? And again, uh, because data frames themselves are lists, you can use the double score bracket on a data frame as well. <coughs> With um, whenever you do subsetting, R sometimes does this simplifying stuff in the background and, and just returns it in. And you kind of get used to it without really thinking um, about all of this stuff, okay? But sometimes you want to preserve uh, the structure of the data. And so, um, so we have a lot of these subsetting operators has an option called drop equals false, which means don't which basically tells our don't simplify it, okay? So, um, so we saw this when we subset the matrix. We subset the matrix down to one row. Rather than giving me back a matrix with one row and three columns, it said, here's a vector with three items in it, okay? If we didn't want to do that, we can use drop equals false, okay? So here's kind of a little table of what it does. Generally, we uh, subset a vector using single square brackets. There is actually a simplifying version of subsetting a vector using double square brackets. And we'll, I'll, I'll explain that, okay? List, if you use the single square bracket, it will always return back the thing in list form. If you use the double square bracket, it simplifies it down to whatever the object inside that list is. With a factor, um, it will preserve uh, kind of the le levels of the factor with the single square brackets. Um, if we want to simplify it, we would say drop is true. So the default is not to simplify. And then arrays or matrices. 
the default behavior is to simplify, which we saw. The matrix um, will drop down to a vector if it's just a single row or single column. If we want to preserve the structure of the matrix, we throw in another comma and say drop is equal to false. Okay? And then with a data frame, because data frames themselves are lists, we can simplify it like this, or, and we can preserve the structure using the single square bracket, or, uh, and this is where it might get a tiny bit confusing, if we uh, use specify a column or something, the default nature is to simplify. And if we, if we don't want that, we can use drop equals to false. Okay, so with atomic vectors, simplifying will remove the names. So in general, if you have a named vector and you use single square brackets, it's going to preserve those names. Okay, we said um, names are just stored as attributes and we said most of the attributes are thrown away when you um, modify a vector or something, except names and um, dimensions and things like that, class. Those, those things are not thrown away when you modify it. And so the names are preserved. If we want to simplify it and throw those away, we can use double square bracket and it will uh, simplify by uh, dropping the names. Okay. Uh, we've already talked about this list stuff, but if we uh, use single square bracket on the list, it will be a list. And if we use the double square bracket on the list, it returns a, you know, the object inside. So if that's a vector, it's a vector. The um, default behavior of a factor when you, uh, when you subset a factor is to preserve all the levels in the original factor. So here I create Z originally with a factor with two levels, A and B, and then when I subset that, it, um, it simplifies it. I mean, it doesn't simplify. It preserves those other, um, those other levels. If I do drop equals true, it gets rid of any unused levels. So it says, oh, you know what? I'm not using level B, so it gets rid of those. Okay, and then, uh, and then we've talked about this already <coughs> with a matrix. If you, um, the default behavior is to simplify. So if you say, I just want the first row, it will simplify it and return it down to a vector. If you want to preserve the structure of the matrix, in this case, we want the, to say that it has two columns, we would say, I want the first row, all the columns, comma, with the option drop equal to false. Okay, and with drop equal to false, it, it prever preserves the structure of the matrix or array, whatever it is that we're dealing with. Okay, with a data frame, here uh, we're treating it like a list. If we subset the data frame and use the single square bracket on one, it returns a data frame. Okay. And then if we use double square bracket, then it simplifies what it returns down to that vector. Okay, Because here you can just think of the data frame as a list, because that's effectively what they are. So single square bracket preserves the nature, and be, it will be a data frame. Double square bracket will simplify it down to um, a vector. Okay. On the other hand, if we use kind of the matrix notation for subsetting a data frame, the default behavior over here is that it will simplify. So data frame, single bracket, comma A, meaning I want all the rows, and the column A, that will simplify it down to um, a vector here. So if we use kind of the matrix notation for uh, subsetting a data frame, it will um, simplify it, whereas if we, um, if we want to preserve the nature of it being a data frame, then we have to specify drop equals false. Okay, So that, that might be a little bit confusing because in one, the default nature is to preserve the data frame structure, and the other, the default nature is to preserve the, uh, is to simplify it. Okay, so if we're using the matrix notation for 
subsetting of the data frame, it simplifies, whereas if you use the list notation for subsetting it, and the single bracket, it doesn't. The dollar sign operator is shorthand for um, basically the double square bracket and, uh, and selecting the name here, okay? So, so for example, with MT cars, we can select the uh, cylinder column by doing MT cars dollar sign cylinder, okay? Sometimes, um, you know, we might be tempted to do something like this, okay, where we have the word variable, and this has the character cylinder, okay? And we say, okay, I want to select the column in empty cars with that name cylinder. But if we do this, this doesn't work because what it's looking for is it, it's looking for a column named variable or var in empty cars, which doesn't exist. So it returns back a null, okay? You could, you can do this, okay? But you just have to do something like uh, empty cars double bracket and then you throw in var, okay? And then it selects it, okay? And this is exactly the same as saying, um, oops, that's not what it's called. Empty car double bracket um, cylinder in quotes. So over here we don't have to we don't have to put cylinder in quotes. We could we could do empty cars dollar sign quote cylinder, and that that works. But you can also get rid of the quotes, and it also works. Okay, but if you use the uh, bracket notation, you need to have the quotes. Okay, if you don't have the quotes, then it says, I don't see a thing called cylinder. But again, if you have something, a character string stored there called cylinder, then you can select, you can select it like this, okay? Because uh, the, the word var represents this character string cylinder, and so that works as well. <laughs> Is this all okay? I just typed a bunch of stuff on the screen here. But, um, okay. What would happen if I did a single bracket? Would this work? Would this fail? What's going to happen? Okay, well, let's see. Um, what, what it's going to do is it's going to treat this like a list. So rather than simplifying it down to a vector of values, it's going to preserve it as a data frame, but it will successfully select um, the column cylinder. Okay, so it does successfully select this, okay, but it, but it keeps it as a data frame because of the, the single bracket preservation. Does that make sense? What it did? Okay. So, um, so this won't work, okay, but the, this does. If you, if you want to like run a loop where you're changing um, the character string in, in, in an object, okay? But I mean, this is probably the most frequent use, right? Empty cars dollar sign cylinder to just select columns. Um, dollar sign does do partial uh, matching, okay? So this, this is less of an issue now that we have RStudio and it has autocomplete, right? But if you are lazy, you can do um, um, you don't have to type out the whole thing and it will match. Just, um, whereas if you did uh, didn't spell out the whole thing, it's not gonna it's not gonna go. But now that we have our studio, um, it auto completes all of your words, right? So, so that's not it's not a big deal. But if you find yourself in base R, whatever, you don't have access to R Studio, then then that might save you a couple keystrokes. But it's generally a good idea to um, type out the whole thing anyway. Okay, let's talk about um, out of bounds stuff. This is getting into like the real nitty gritty of stuff in R. Um, do we have to stress too much about it? No, don't stress too much about it. But well, don't stress too much about anything, really. That's 
that's advice for all of life. There's, it's just school, right? I mean, um, but okay. Um, we do get different behaviors when we're talking about out of bounds um, things. So out of bounds refers to you're giving it like um, a reference to something that doesn't quite exist, right? So if you have a vector with four elements in it and you're saying give me back the fifth element or the tenth element, okay? That's technically out of bounds. So with single bracket here, if you say give me back the fifth element in X and it doesn't exist, it's going to say um, that doesn't exist, okay? If you give it a missing value, NA, it's going to return back missing. Or if you give it um, the null object to subset something, it's going to give you an empty vector, okay? Or, you know, if you have a matrix or let's say a, a data frame with uh, five columns and you say, I want in the seventh column, give me back this, okay? That's an out of bounds thing. So a lot of times if you write loops and you say like for I and, you know, one through 10 or something like that, and, um, and you're doing like, keep going until like I plus one, and then, you know, your data frame has like, you know, 50 rows in it, and you go to I plus one, and it gets to row 51, your, um, your loop might kick back an out of bounds error, meaning you're trying to get to the 51st row, and that doesn't exist, right? So these are kind of things that you have to worry about when you're reaching the end of, the, of your loop that you're trying to run, okay? So if you give it an out of bounds reference, okay, and on an atomic thing, with single score bracket, it's going to return back missing. If with a list, it will give you back a list with a null object in it. Okay, so it's not. So this is this is interesting. So if I have um, D is a list of A is one through four. Okay, so this is this. And if I say D, give me the third thing. Okay, it gives me back a list with the null object in it. Okay. The, because I use the single square bracket here. Whereas if I used double square bracket, okay, on an out of bounds thing, it will give me back an error. So if I say D double bracket three, then it says error in this subscript out of bounds, okay? And this is, you've probably seen this error before, maybe, I don't know. If you've done any bit of programming in R with loops, you've probably encountered a subscript out of bounds error, okay? And, and stuff like that, okay? And then so um, th these are kind of the things you give it missing values, it will return back null or things like that if you give it a null thing. So, you know, sometimes you'll have an operator like inside your loop, you'll say like, uh, I want you to select the row that where, you know, x is equal to equal to some criteria. But then during these comparisons, you get a missing value and then now you're trying to select something from a missing value and then you get all sorts of things, right? So. Of course, we don't purposely make mistakes, but when we do loops and we don't think about every single possible thing, a lot of times we run into these, these issues. Okay, you don't have to have this memorized or anything. I'm just, this is just getting into the, these nitty gritties. Okay, oh, oh dear. Um, and uh, okay, so let's talk about subsetting an assignment. Um, you can uh, subset uh, an object and, uh, and then perform assignment here, so I've got the values 1 through 5, and I'm just going to say stick in values 2 and 3 for the first two items. You can do that, okay? Um, the length of the left-hand side needs to match the right-hand side for it to work, so this works, and I can replace everything but the first item with 4, 3, 2, 1. That's fine. There's no checking for duplicate indices, so if I say subset uh, x, give me the first object, or the first element and the first element, and I say overwrite that with 2 and 3, the second time I call it, the 3 will overwrite that too. Okay? And then you know we can't combine missing things, but you can mix a logical index, logical vector, true, false, missing with this. And so this will be, this will replace the first, skip the second, and skip the third, because the third will be NA. And then it loops around, it um, recycles it, so the fourth will be replaced with a 1, the fifth will not, and then the last, uh, and then the sixth uh, will be skipped. So it goes one is true, uh, false, NA, 
one gets replaced, and then this one was already at one to begin with. So that's what happens. Okay. This is probably um, most commonly used when we subset something in a data frame or something like that. So we condition, we, uh, we say, I want all the elements in the data frame for column A less than five, and then we're going to replace all of those things with a zero or something like that. And we can do that uh, and modify, uh, perform assignment right there. Okay, so you can say like, um, you know, if this column has this value, then over in this column, assign the value true or something like that. Okay, and you can do that. Um, you can use the uh, empty reference here, okay, with an empty um, thing because it will preserve the structure. So empty cars, square bracket, empty. And then if we take the output of L apply, L apply always outputs a list, L for list apply. And, and this will preserve that it is a data frame, whereas if we get rid of this, then it just takes the output of L apply, which is a list, and empty cars will be a list. Okay. okay, and then we can assign things to null, and null will just kill the thing in the list. So if I, and I think we did this when we were looking at the attributes. And I said, like, we can null out the dimension attribute, and it just kills that thing in the list, okay? And so here I had a list of A and B, and I put a null for B, and then B is completely gone now, okay? If you want to keep a literal null in there, then you have to say, I want the list of the null object, and then that, then that will work, okay? Otherwise, if you put a null here, it, it just destroys the B. Okay, and then I'm going to just blitz through a couple of these examples for important applications of subsetting, but um, uh, you know we might continue this on Monday here. Okay, so it says with a lookup table, we can create a lookup table. So here I've got vector x, and it's got m and f and u for you know possibly a person's uh, gender or sex or something. Okay, and here I've got lookup, lookup itself is a vector with only three items in it, m, f, and u, okay? But if I subset lookup, which has originally only three items in it, if I subset lookup based on x, because subsetting allows repeat indices, it expands all of this, and it gives me back m and f and n, a, and all of this stuff, okay? So you can <laughs> feed it into the subsetting, something that's longer than the original um, vector, and it will kind of duplicate everything because it allows duplicate entries. Okay, and even when you, um, and if you want to get rid of those names, you can just use unname, and you can even have uh, in your original vector m reference and f equal to the same values and it doesn't complain, okay? So we can just say known, known versus unknown, and then it, it fills it all out here, okay? And then this is just kind of a expansion or generalization of that, in that you can have, um, you can match it on a, a data frame. So over here, we our lookup table was just a simple vector with three elements. You can have a lookup table with multiple columns and match those multiple columns, um, likewise on this here. Okay, and um, uh, this is probably worth an exploration uh, in your own time here. And then we'll uh, we'll pick up on this uh, on Monday where we leave off. Okay, so have a great weekend, and uh, we'll see you guys in a few days.